Hey, what's up, guys, and welcome to episode 102 of Talk 4, the quickfire podcast where we ask four great questions to unique and interesting people. Behind the mic today is your host, Louis Scoopian. That's me. And let me introduce our special guest for today, Steve Kelly, who's going to be answering our questions today. Steve, welcome aboard the Talk 4 podcast, man. Please say hi to the fine people listening in today and give us a kind of a 30 to 60 second ish kind of rundown of who you are and what you do and then we're going to shoot some questions bro oh spot on louis first i want to say thanks for inviting me on here uh, i've never done one of these before so i'm quite excited about this awesome. but uh, a bit about me my name's steve uh, i've been serving now in the military for 21 years in a uh, in uk commando forces uh, bit of background, I used to be on the guns, that was my career path, now I'm coming to the end of my career, I'm in a logistics side now, so making sure the lads get out the door with the right kit and equipment, and uh, I'm on here today to uh, have a little chat with you, and hopefully you can understand me, I've got a bit of a funny accent, my own daughter can't even understand me, but uh, hopefully you can understand me today when I'm talking to you. <laughs> no man, it's good, it's coming across uh, loud and clear, and uh, I think I saw so um. I think we're we're pretty close actually. So your your business Southwest Survival is based in Devon, and I'm um, I'm near to Taunton in Somerset. So I think we're actually quite close on the um quite close on the map, aren't we? Yeah, I'm based down in Plymouth, sunny old Plymouth. So literally up the road from you. That's awesome, man. Well, okay, so we've got someone who's kind of local as well, which is great. Um, always a pleasure. I usually interview people who are, uh, you know, at least uh, a fair whack away. I've, someone came back to me today who's uh, across the pond in the States. So um, it's good to have a fellow Brit on, on the go here. Um, man, so first things first, uh, kind of guide me through the backstory a bit then. So kind of walk me through your military career to start with. What motivated you to join up to start with and just kind of go through like the career path uh, so far in your military um, career so far? Yeah, so uh, I joined the military at a young age, to be honest. I joined as a 16-year-old lad. So when I was younger, I was a bit of a tear away in school. And I remember vividly one of my teachers called Miss Curran. She used to always say to me on a on a monthly basis, you're going to amount to nothing. And I remember that vividly. And I remember going through all my GCSEs. And like I said, I was a bit of a tear away, a bit of a scally. I was into the boxing, causing trouble, that type of stuff. And uh, I remember going through my GCSEs and I got my GCSE back. And my GCSEs actually spelled fudge, F-U-T-G-E. And I thought, oh, here we go. I think Miss Curran was right. But uh, when I was younger, <laughs> I, was, I was doing boxing and I was doing the cadets and all that type of stuff. So I had, I had sort of a dream. I wanted to do something outdoors. A bit of adventure, and I'm one of those people who's a kinesthetic learner, so I need to do stuff with hands on. So I struggled massively in school anyway. So that's that's what I thought. I thought, you know what, I sort my life out. And my dad used to play mind games with me. So I'll say I'm gonna join the army. And we used to watch a program, you might you might remember it, called Soldier Soldier and uh, Bad Lads Army. We used to watch these little programs when I was younger. I mean, my dad used to play reverse psychology with me saying, You'll never hack that son. I'll go and join the army. And he goes, Go on, then I'll sign the paperwork and, and love and behold I went and signed it and that was me shipped off to Harrogate phase one training back in 2002 and I'm still in there today. Nice man so um, from what I've heard you're a commando then is that right? Yeah yeah I'm, a, I'm one of the army commando units based down in uh, Plymouth uh, like I said I've been down here all my career other than being an instructor on uh, the pre-commando course I've saved my unit my whole career. Amazing man! Well, I mean, a commando is a, a a serious thing, dude. So, congrats to you there. And uh, so, obviously, kind of looking at your your pages, the website and stuff. Your thing is the survival thing, and I find it so interesting. I haven't actually had anyone on so far who has really spoken about kind of survival techniques and everything. Uh, but so, kind of before we go into like the actionable stuff and sort of more about that side of things, um, I'm interested to know then, like, where did you pick up those skills and the survival techniques and stuff? I assume most of it would have been in the military, right? But um, yeah, kind of walk me through a little bit about the um, just kind of where you picked up those that skill set and um, and how you came about it really, and and also a bit about the interest in it too, because you obviously are, you know, you're a big fan of it as well, I imagine. So yeah, talk me through it. It's funny where it all comes from. It all stemmed from a little kid, to be honest, going outside and building dens and making little fires, like most people did. Uh, you got kicked out of the house and you had to be back home when the street lights went on. Uh, so it all stemmed back then. Uh, and then I was in the scouts, then cadets. But when I joined the military, uh, I got fully involved in it, especially when I went through uh, commando training, where you do survival training on that. And I really enjoyed the subject. I liked the fact of being stripped down with nothing and going to try and get out of sticky situations. So that's where it all started stemming from. And then back in uh, 2010, or two, yeah, 2010, when I was an instructor on a pre-commando course, I went and done the actual uh, some, some SEER courses, 
where you actually learn a bit more survival training. And I just love the subject from there, and it's just growing, growing, and growing. Then uh, later on from my career, I started to do more civilian courses, a bit more bushcraft courses, and learning how to make string out of nettles and all that type of stuff, and getting into the weeds of things. And I've just done plenty of civilian courses, just building it alongside what I'm doing in the military, ready for when I exit in civilian life. And back in 2016, that's when I set up my own survival company. But it was weird how it came about. I never just set up my survival company overnight. I was already doing stuff, and I, I set up a page called Devon Survival. So I was I was going out just, just putting posts up with all my own crazy stuff I was doing. Then I started to get a message saying, oh, would you do a birthday party? Would you do a stag do? And that's where Selfish Survival actually came from. Uh, but the name of the company came from one of my mates. My mate, uh, my mate told me uh, to call it Selfish Survival. He came up with the logo for me for my business and uh, got it all done for me. But that's where it all stemmed from, to be honest, from being a young lad in a little tear away, running around the parks, lighting fires and making dens. <laughs> and I've, just, I've just evolved uh, as I've grown up. I love it, man. That's so cool. And it's fun when you... um. You know, when you take someone like yourself, who's got obviously like a passion for something from a young age and everything for that, and then you can turn that into something that's monetary, like a business, because then you're doing something that you love like so much and you get to pass on that, that passion as well, rather than it just being for like monetary stuff. So it's really good that you've got to follow that. Um, So how many years have you been doing this then? So like from commando training to now and everything, how long, how long have you been um in the survival game for? So since yes, since two thousand and ten, uh, I've been at it every year, and I've been quite lucky uh, with the courses I've got to do through the military, and my own courses I pay for in uh, Civilian Street. But it's allowed me to. I got. I ended up doing a survival TV show on Channel E Four. I've done a show called Naked and Alone. I got dropped off naked up in the mountains, so I had a good opportunity to test myself. And uh, uh, most recently, I've had Discovery Channel reach out. So hopefully, in the future. I get to do some stuff with Discovery Channel in the future. I leave the military, so I'm excited for it. Like, Oh, man, that's absolutely wicked, dude. Yeah, I saw that you'd been a part of that. And, you know, I come from a family that's actually a really big fan of these kind of survival programs, too, and all the kind of Naked and Afraids and all the Ed Stafford stuff. And even even for me, going back to, like, the Bear Grylls days and stuff, I, I, what's Bear Grylls up to? I don't even know, dude. But, I mean, he, um, he was at least, you know, those programs he was putting out there really kind of paved the way for me as well in terms of, like, a passion for that, too. And it's funny you should say all that, man, because as well, when I was thinking back to it, um. As a kid, me, who's grown up in, obviously, you know, we're, we're fairly close, um, but in the southwest in Somerset, where it's kind of, you know, just outside of a village, National Tr- Trust property, um, we've got woodland all around. And as a kid, literally, all I wanted to do all the time was get out into those woods, sharpen sticks, make traps, and just do stuff out there, man. That was like my natural sort of, that was like my default setting almost in a way. So definitely kind of share that passion there for sure. Um, so 2016, you started that business. What, when did you sort of think, mm, I can turn this like experience and this passion into a business? Like how did it kind of come about for you and starting that business kind of walk me through that a bit? So I've got a good story on this. So I actually uh, lost my eyesight in my right eye back in uh, 2012. I came on with a disease oh, no. and I lost my eyesight and... I was at the verge of getting a patent from the military, admin discharge, because it was nothing to do with the military, just a natural disease, which one in 100,000 people get. And I was unfortunate. I got it in my right eye. And at the time, I was thinking, what am I going to do? What am I going to do in my life? The only thing I know how to do is uh, run around the woods with a weapon or a knife building shelters. So uh, I started, that's what's turned Devon Survival into Southwest Survival. I needed to... Something what I was passionate about, something what I'm good at, I needed to start generating an income. But luckily for me, I built Southwest Survival. But then the the militaries looked after me uh, and kept me in, which which is really good. But it was just it was at a point where I was scared, I was panicking. What can I do now? I've, I've got a, got a disease in my eye. I've lost my eyesight. I might not be able to fire a weapon no more. I'm gonna have to find a new career. I'm not getting no payout. What am I gonna do? And that's when Southwest Survival fully uh, fully kicked off and. I've been all in with it ever since in my own time on the weekends, in the evenings, and that's all I work on now. Oh man, I mean, I'm I'm so sorry to hear about your eye, but I'm so glad to hear about the business and that you clearly found your your evolution there. Um, how are you doing with that now? How how, how is it uh, nowadays? Yeah, it's a, it's all good. My eye doesn't really bother me. Uh, the military's adjusted to it, so I've got a bracket on my rifle, so I can lean over and shoot with my left eye instead of my right eye, so my sight sits higher, uh, and I just get I get medically checked every year, but. It, it hasn't stopped me. It, it's only, it's probably only pushed me to work harder 
100 nice. percent because I could have lost my career like that overnight. Uh, so it's only it, it's only pushed me and motivated me to grow my business because I, I, when I leave, I've only got 20 months left in the military. When I leave, I don't want to really get a job. I want to just work for self for survival. So I'm putting all my eggs in one basket. So it really motivated me. Yeah, no, absolutely, man. And that really resonates as well because so many of the people have had on before. There's a few guys who, I mean, one of the most recent ones, Mark Ormrod, you know, triple amputee and Nick Lavery before that is an amputee as well. And, uh, you know, a, f- a few guys have been through the ringer and stuff. And it's, it's just become apparently clear, at least to me, listening to these people and their stories, that when something happens like that, you have a choice if it's going to like drag you down and, or it's going to build you up. And clearly you've done the build you up option out of those two and everything. So hats off to you, man. Um, How long are you thinking of staying in the military for then? Have you, um, have you got a plan for that or is it, is it not to be disclosed? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm doing it full time. I've only got 20 months left and then that's my full career done. Uh, then literally in 20 months, I'm going to switch fire and I'm going all in with my business. So just in the time being, in the, in the evenings and on the weekends, I'm just working south for survival to build it big enough to hopefully generate an income constantly when I leave the military. Good man, I'm glad to hear it. That's really, uh, really exciting stuff, dude. And um, I, I can, I can vouch for that. When you, when you start your own business and everything, if it's going well, and then you've got that kind of leap of faith to make, really exciting stuff, especially when it starts to really kick off. And it looks like you got a groundwork for a great business there. But yeah, so one of the key subjects I really wanted to tap into today, today as well was uh, so something that I've kind of been harping on a bit about with my past guests, at least recently as well. Is that I feel like men in general and people in general in society have like become so sort of incompetent i know that sounds bad but everything is like provided to them so marks the same thing um you know you can click a button right now and i mean not here because i'm literally out in the sticks but i mean 99 percent of people can can literally just click a button go on their phone and have food like delivered to them straight away amazon yeah and whatever you need dude hardware store and yeah don't need that anymore kind of stuff and just feels like with this sort of acceptance culture and with like everything being so easy now it feels like people have almost become a bit weaker and less competent and everything and like I said I kind of want to round back on that as a kid my default was literally to get out in the woods sharpen sticks and go play in there and and make little traps and stuff and I just feel like people and men especially need to kind of go back to their roots a bit like get out there get in the woods go swimming in the wild go you know grow some food go chop some logs I mean I kind of just say I mean nothing makes me feel like better inside than like chopping a few logs or something but and you know training hard connect with nature men and people need to do that more nowadays but i feel like survival and bushcraft especially is like at least an essential skill that i think everyone should at least know or tap into at some point in their lives so the sad thing is it probably isn't going to be a southwest survival school uh in the northwest or something so you know you might not have a place that's right by you so if you're someone kind of listening in right now, young lad or young girl or something, and you want to sort of find a bit of that outdoor thing and find some new skill sets and everything, where would you sort of start with that? Um, are there any kind of books, resources? Do you just get out there? Um, you know, where do you begin? What's like a little to do list for getting started and in, in finding yourself in nature a bit? You've just hit the nail on the head, and you already said the answer. It's just getting out, Louis. It's just getting a backpack on. Just get the basics in there, something to keep you warm, something to keep you dry if it rains. Get a hot flask in there and go walking. And like you said, there's nothing better than sitting around chopping wood, sitting around a fire, just glazing into it. And people don't do that. It's like a forgotten art now. Like you said, that means at the, at the fingertips. I live in Plymouth. We've got Dartmoor on the doorstep, and there's so many people in this city who's never even seen Dartmoor. And it's literally on the doorstep, but it's free. Get in your car, you drive 15 minutes, and you are on the national. You're on the moors, you're on Dartmoor, and people do not do it. There's no one in sight. You can go for a nice walk. It clears your mind. It's really good for mental clarity and mental health, but people don't do it. They're going to get home. They're going to play the PlayStations. They're going to twiddle the thumbs on the phone, and they're going to scroll. But that's all people need to do. Just get out. Get a backpack on. Put something in there. Uh, keep, keep them dry. Uh, keep them warm. Some hat and gloves. Uh, some sort of tap, a first aid kit and a flask and you are good to go and then you just build up from there and when these people get a bit more confidence you strip the kit down, you take less and less, then hopefully go out on your own with just a knife and build a few shelters and make a fire and then that's it where can you do something like that? So obviously, you know, you've got your school and your allocated location and everything, but people who, I mean, I know this myself, I've always been a little bit confused about the kind of regulations around doing stuff like that in woods, whether public or private, 
Um, so if you're someone who's kind of thinking, well, I don't want to, you know, rattle any uh, cages or anything, where would you kind of begin at least with um, with doing stuff like that and building a shelter and a fire or something? How do you kind of get around the, the red tape at least? Like you said, that there's a lot of there's a lot of laws in the U in England and Wales. In Scotland, there's not. There's you've got a you got you can free roam in most places up in Scotland, up in the Highlands. So if you wanna if you wanna strip right back and test yourself, do you wanna be going past Inverness, up in the Highlands and going out in the woods? Uh, but if you wanna do if you if you're out from the south or you're in England or you're near the Lake District, you need to get a landowner's permission. So you can't just go in woods and start making fires, but you can start going out. You're allowed to walk in a national trust, you're allowed to put a backpack on. You can find wild camping spots on Dartmoor. There's wild camping areas all over Dartmoor, which you're allowed to go on. Uh, the same as Brecon, the same as Snowdonia, the same as the Lake District. There's places where you can go with bare minimal kit by just putting a day sack on, a little backpack on with your essentials and just getting out there uh, and going out there with a couple of your friends and do something different. And that's it. Great points, man. Yeah, I totally agree with that for sure. I need to look into that too, because I absolutely love wild camping, but I just haven't been in so long. I need to get back into it. But okay, so um, last kind of little thing I want to ask then as well is just so if you did have someone listening in right now who's like, yeah, tick, 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 and all these things, um, would you like let's say you could get a message or like at least you could have that moment where you're the mastermind in the matrix and you can program a little something into everyone in the world what would be like your little quick at least checkbox of a few survival things that you think literally everyone should at least know like what are the the basic bare bones of survival stuff that everyone should have in their skill set like no, no matter who you are basically I believe that everyone should be able to light a fire with a fire starter or by friction. Not not necessarily friction. Let's let's go with like a flint and steel or a fire starter, a ferro rod. Everyone should be able to light a fire. It's so simple by a bit of cotton wool, a bit of Vaseline and using a striker. And you'd be surprised at how many people can't even do that. And I, I, I believe that's a bare minimum. Every time I go out hiking, I'll always have three forms of fire lighting. That'll be a lighter. That'll be matches and a, a, a ferro rod, a fire starter. I'll always have three forms of lighting in case any other method fails. Then you fall down onto a fire by friction if everything fails. But that's a one thing that I, I wish everyone knew. Just a striker, a fire starter. And you can do so much with that. It's going to keep animals away. So if you're in Canada in the mountains, a fire is going to scare the animals and uh, the animals and wolves. You're going to be able to boil water. You're going to be able to cook foods. You're going to be able to uh, keep yourself warm. It's got so many uses with fire. So that's just one skill. You can go and practice in the back garden. You can go and get a fire starter, a ferro rod from eBay for a pound uh, and keep that for it. Uh, and they have about 10,000 strikes on them. So that's one skill that I wish everyone knew. And it make the life so much easier. Absolutely, man. No doubt about it. And um, yeah, so oh, that's been the four questions. And let's say uh, if someone doesn't, just want to learn the most basic bare bins and they want to get the crash course in the whole thing and they want to take a trip up or down rather to southwest survival um shameless plug away so websites social media and uh, just send the people who are listening in uh, over to whatever you want to promote and um, where we can find more stuff on you i know that you post some really good little bits and bobs on instagram too um so yeah send them to all the little shameless plug points <laughs> So I share a lot of survival content on my on my personal Instagram, which is survival underscore stay. But if, if you are genuine, you want to learn a few skills in a military manner, a bit robust, no not no fluffing about, no messing around. Uh, my actual company is at Southwest Survival, and we're on Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram, LinkedIn. We're on all different types of platforms, and I'd love to have anyone there, even just to go out for a little hike, show you what to put in your backpack, and show you a few basics. If that's you and you're looking in, give us a shout, and we can go from there amazing man well steve that has been uh the four questions for today dude i really appreciate having you on and honestly thank you for joining me today for the talk for a podcast absolute pleasure dude and uh yeah thanks for thanks for doing this no nah, thank you louis much appreciated for having me on and like i said this is the first time i've done something in this scenario and i really enjoyed it i'm glad to hear it man well that's uh that's my job i uh i'm here to make your time awesome and uh, send people to uh epic people like yourself and i feel like i've done that today so objective complete and yeah guys thanks for listening episode 102 and if you'd like to listen to the past ones go and have a look at the channel and if you'd like to listen in for the future ones too make sure to hit that subscribe button and spread some love by leaving a like and a comment signing off for now good night people and fights on see you next time <laughs>